Hello everyone, do you know what is yogurt? I am sure everyone familiar with it, and even have tasted it. So, in this video, we will learn all about yogurt and its life cycle. Stay tuned. Here is the content for this video, which firstly for the introduction, we will learn about the history of the yogurt. Secondly, we will learn about the life cycle of the yogurt, which consists of five stages of life cycle. For the third one, which is regarding the impacts, we will learn how the yogurt production can affect the environment. And lastly for the mitigation measure, we will learn about the solutions to these yogurt production problems. Firstly, Introduction. Do you know? Yogurt is considered by most regulatory agencies worldwide, to be a fermented milk product, that provides digested lactose and specifically defined, viable bacterial strains. The typical yogurt bacteria that we know such as the Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus bulgaricus. Yogurt also a source of several essential nutrients, including protein, calcium, phosphorus and other nutrients such as potassium and riboflavin. It also a source of some vitamins such as vitamin B6 and vitamin B12, and serves as a vehicle for fortification. Actually, yogurt is an ancient food that has gone by many names over the millennia. It also has different name for each country. For example, in Armenia, it was called Kadik. In India, it was called Dal. It was called Zabadi in Egypt, and was called Iogurt in Brazil. Also, it is believed that milk products were incorporated into human diet, around 10,000 to 5,000 BC with the domestication of milk producing animals such as cow, sheep and goats, as well as yaks, horses, buffalo and camels. However, milk spoiled easily, making it difficult to use. Therefore, at that time, herdsmen in the Middle East carried milk in bags made of intestinal gut. It was discovered, milk that contact with intestinal juices caused the milk to curdle and sour which has caused the milk changed its texture and taste, and allow for conservation of a dairy product. Therefore, here we learn that, the purpose of yogurt actually to extend the shelf life of dairy product, such as milk because the raw milk can spoiled easily. Next, we will learn about the life cycle of the yogurt, which cover the material production, yogurt manufacturing, the transportation and distribution process, usage, and lastly, the end of life. Firstly, the material production. So, how is yogurt can be produced? Actually, making yogurt is very easy. This is because, the production of yogurt requires only two ingredients, which are milk and live cultures, such as the probiotics. However, producers may also include fruits, stabilizers, dry milk powder, and sweeteners. Milk and dairy products such as skim milk or powdered milk still are the main material for the production of yogurt. Conventionally, yogurt is produced from cow's milk, and a starter cultures containing lactic acid bacteria such as Lactobacillus bulgaricus, and Streptococcus thermophilus. Next, we will continue to the manufacturing of yogurt. So, how actually yogurt are being produced in a large scale? Basically, there are several processes involved during the yogurt manufacturing, such as the standardize of the milk, pasteurization, homogenization, cooling, fermentation, filling, and packaging. Basically, the yogurt is produced from the raw milk. Then, the milk will be standardized, which the milk composition may be adjusted to achieve the desired fat and solids content. Ingredients such as stabilizers are added at this time. The next process which is pasteurization, which the milk mixture will be pasteurized at 85 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, or 95 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. A high heat treatment is used to denature the whey proteins, which can allow the proteins to form a more stable gel, which prevents separation of the water during storage. The high heat treatment also further reduces the number of spoilage organisms in the milk, to provide a better environment for the starter cultures to grow. Next, for the homogenization process, the blend is homogenized about 2000 to 2500 psi, 
to mix all ingredient thoroughly to improve the yogurt consistency. Next, the milk will be cooled to 42 degrees Celsius to bring the yogurt to the ideal growth temperature for the starter culture. Then, the cooled milk will be inoculate with starter cultures, to produce the yogurt. Later, the milk will be hold at 42 degrees Celsius, until a pH 4.5 is reached. This allows the fermentation to progress to form a soft gel, and the characteristic flavor of yogurt, and this process can take a several hours. The yogurt also is cooled to 7 degrees Celsius to stop the fermentation process. Also, the fruit and flavors are added at different steps, depending on the type of yogurt. And lastly, the yogurt is pumped from the fermentation vat and packages, as desired. Next, we move on to the transportation and distribution. After being packed, the yogurt will be distributed to the local store. However, the distribution of the yogurt to the local store may consume the energy, as it needed a transportation such as lorry. The combustion from the lorry may release lots of air pollutants such as the carbon monoxide, that can harm the environment, especially the atmosphere. The Stage 4, Usage. In term of usage, the more concerns regarding the yogurt production is the packaging itself, rather than the yogurt. Basically, the use of polystyrene is the most common material used for yogurt packaging. However, polystyrene is brittle, and usually contains a rubberizing compound such as butadiene, to give the packaging flexibility. Therefore, the resulting material that are commonly used for yogurt packaging is known as high-impact polystyrene, HIPS. Even though these yogurt cup containers may be safe to reuse, However there is a research from environmental health perspectives that the plastics used in the food containers can release estrogenic activators, if reused repeatedly, and we know that such chemicals can be harmed. The last stage, end of life. Basically, after we done eating the yogurt, usually the yogurt cup will just end it in the dustbin to be a regular waste like others. But, as we know, some yogurt packaging are made of plastic, and considered as plastic waste. Therefore, we should not just throw it away in the normal dustbin but it is better for us to dispose it in the better way, such as we recycled it. Next, we move on to the impacts of yogurt production to the environment. The yogurt production covers multiple activities related to milk production and treatment for alimentary uses. However, this yogurt production sector has gives impacts to the environment. Firstly, the production of the milk-based inputs such as the raw milk and powdered milk, was the main responsible of the high environmental loads and energy requirements. For example, much electricity is consumed during yogurt production, such as during pasteurization, evaporation, and cooling stages, that can contribute to global warming potential, GWP. Next, the yogurt packaging also can increase the plastic waste. This is because, the use of plastic packaging for the yogurt can increase the plastic waste, which is hard to dispose. Lastly, the mitigation. What can we do to reduce the environmental impacts from the production of the yogurt? So, the potential mitigation measures that can be implemented including to reduce the contributions to the environmental profile throughout the life cycle of the yogurt. This is including minimization of milk losses, reduce the energy consumption during manufacturing process, and improve the yogurt packaging, which using more degradable materials instead of plastic. So, I think that's all for this video. Hope you will get lots of information regarding the yogurt and its life cycle when watching this video. Before that, don't forget to like and comment this video, and subscribe to this channel for more information. Thank you.